After 13 years of not getting a sequel for The World Ends With You, that time has come to pass and come July 27th, we will get a true sequel to The World Ends With You with Neo, The World Ends With You. And in this video, I want to go over everything you should know before you spend $60. However, yes, the MSRP for this game is $60, but I will let you guys know that there are various retailers that are selling it right now for $49.97, so you can get it at a $10 off discount. I believe Amazon is one of those said retailers, rather e-tailer, but you guys get the deal however in this video i still want to go over all of the information that you should know before you pick the game up right away before you buy the game make sure you play the demo you can start your gameplay and your time with neo the world ends with you by downloading the demo off the playstation store or off the nintendo eShop. start your adventure today in the free demo of neo the world ends with you the demo save data can be transferred over to the retail version of the game play the beginning of the story advance your characters up to level 15 and prepare yourself for the full experience on July 27th. The demo is actually relatively lengthy as well, so if you're expecting to just get like a 15 to 20 minute demo, no, given the fact you can get up to level 15, you actually have a pretty sizable demo here, so you should definitely take advantage of that. Also, get an idea of what the game has to offer from a gameplay standpoint, since obviously, since this is on the Switch, on the PlayStation 4, it's gonna be very, very much a stark difference than the original World Ends With You, which was initially a Nintendo DS title, ported to the mobile platform, and then also put on the Nintendo Switch. The story, let's go over some background as it is a follow-up to The World Ends With You. The game notes it was just another seemingly ordinary day in Shibuya, but not for Rindo. He could tell something about the city felt different. He soon finds himself caught in the telekinetic crossfire of a psychic battle unfolding in the scramble crossing, and before he can catch his breath, a girl with an ominous aura appears before him and welcomes him to the so-called Reaper's game. With some trepidation, Rindo and his friend Fret play along, convincing themselves that a game couldn't have any serious consequences. It isn't long, however, until they start having second thought, Rindo's instinct was right, something about the Shibuya is a bit different, and if you're familiar with the first World Ends With You, you know the Reaper's game isn't all as what it seems. But nevertheless, a pretty good layout for this story, and generally speaking, kind of similar to what we saw in the original game. Let's go over the characters, because of any JRPG, the characters are going to be at the crux of the story, and we know of four main party characters, but more can join in the future we don't know any clarity on that this is going to be a lengthy game so things are always going to be in flux obviously you have rindo the main character and one of the newest players in the reapers game rindo is a high schooler to whom searching for info on his phone is second nature he prefers to go with the flow and although he doesn't go out of his way to interact with others he won't turn them away if they come to him first trust thrust into the game without ever realizing it he now serves as the de facto leader of the wicked twisters and then you have Nagi, another player in the Reapers game. Nagi is a college student whose youthful appearance leads others to mistake her for a middle schooler. She is deeply passionate about her pastimes, devoting all of her time and energy to her favorite games. Highly perceptive, she is acutely aware of others' emotions and shows disdain toward those she deems superficial and disingenuous. Then you have Fret, Rindo's happy-go-lucky classmate and fellow player in the Reapers game. Fret boasts the ability to get along with just about anyone while he styles himself as a natural conversationalist. He prefers to keep keep things light, subconsciously avoiding subjects that are too serious. He enjoys walking around town with his buddy, Rin Dude, obviously being the main character. And lastly, you have Minami Moto, who puts his impressive psychic powers to use when he saves Rindo and the gang from a tight spot early on, then forces himself onto their team. He calculates every possible future using his own unique formulas and acts as in accordance with the values he discovers, but he remains a mystery to all around him. He seems to have his sights set on something greater than Rindo and the gang. So those are the four main characters that you are completely kept aware of. Obviously, there are going to be a lot of other main characters, and the game is going to be a relatively lengthy story, so expect a lot of characters characters to come in and come out, and a lot of them with depth, and as far as the cast itself goes, do expect some surprises in that as well, which I won't go into since I know a couple things about the game, but let's not divulge into too many spoilers. Okay, obviously this is going to be a lengthy JRPG, and it was noted by the developers themselves. There's a lot more to do in this game, especially compared to the original game. I think reaching the ending alone will take around 50 hours. Also noted, if you're the type of player to do everything a game has to offer, expect your hour count to reach the triple digits. There's a lot to collect in the game, everything from character profiles to pins, with some challenging fights thrown in as well. Clearing certain milestones in the game allow players to receive graffitied stickers, which you can decorate the back streets of the world with. This was coming from 
from a conversation with Tatsuya Kondo with 4Gamer, and it was translated by Nintendo Everything. So credit to them on the word on that. Now, 50 hours to get to the ending and 100 hours to do everything. We sometimes hear about these hyperbolic uh, time stamps that people attach to games. Like, I always take that with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, you know, 50 hours to get to the ending. For somebody... Like, that is the average person that's, you know, going through the game naturally. I think it's going to be a little bit shorter. They might say 50 hours, but honestly, more often than not, I do see games being a little bit shorter than whatever the developers say that it is. So I would go into it expecting more of a 35 to 40 hour experience, but it's going to be a long game. And if you're looking for a game with a lot of content, this is going to have a lot of side content and additional things to do. And you kind of got a taste of that in the demo. So go again, play that demo if you want an idea of what to expect in the main game. Now, obviously, Neo The World Ends With You is a follow up to The World Ends With You. If you're on a PlayStation platform, it's unfortunate because there's no real easy way to go ahead and play the original title. If you if you have a Nintendo Switch, obviously you can download The World Ends With you um the original game that was remastered for the switch and by the way that game's uh price for the physical copy of that game has spiked up i would imagine in correlation with the release of this game but you can still buy it digitally for that uh, i believe it's 50 dollars might be a full 60 the game is great but yeah kind of pricey as far as that's concerned but the other option is that there is a world ends with you animation anime out right now it's 12 episodes and while i wouldn't say it's the greatest thing in the world if you want a general idea of the story that is an option as well as far as how you want to get the story if you just want to jump into neo the world ends with you and you don't want to buy the original or you have no way to really play the original Lastly, I do want to go over platforms. It's going to be available on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 come July 27th, and it will also be coming to PC. It will be an Epic Game Store exclusive. It seems like Square Enix and Epic Game Store do have a pretty healthy relationship going on right now. Rumblings that the Final Fantasy VII Remake will also be coming to PC as an Epic Game Store exclusive, so that is something to consider, but that will be available later in the summer. I would imagine after a one-year timed exclusivity period, it would be coming to other e-tailers on PC such as Steam, but Again, the game is available at an MSRP of $60, but you can pick it up for $50 over on like Amazon and a couple of other uh, e-tailers and retailers, so you can get it a little bit cheaper already. Go ahead and play that demo and let me know what you guys think about the demo. Let me know if you're picking the game up. Is this one you're going to wait on for a bigger sale? Let me know all of that information in the comment section down below. I'm super excited for the game, and I think if you do play that demo, that is going to sell a lot of people on the game. And excellent, excellent music to this game as well. Some of the soundtrack is already uploaded on YouTube. Go ahead and listen to some of that, because if you listen to that, if you're a fan of, like, alternative rock, or some of the songs that were in the original World Ends With You, that is going to be right up your alley. One of the best OSTs of the year by the looks of it, so that is definitely one of the killer aspects of this game. So sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.